there are several ways to assess the quality of studies that go into a meta-analysis. One of these ways is by looking at the statistical power of the tests that were used in these studies that go into these meta-analyses. Uh, now, of course, you could do this manually one by one, but this can take a lot of time. But there is a way that you can do this using the information that you've already collected as part of your meta-analysis. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is to load the packages that we need, Metaphor, Metaviz, and PUniform, which I'll get to later. And we are going to be uh, using a data set which is built into Metaphor, which is a correlational data set. Next, with this command, we're going to be uh, calculating the effect size and variances. And let's take a look at this data set. And we can see at the end, we have our column, uh, column here with uh, effect sizes and column here with variances. Next, we're going to run the meta-analysis proper, and we can see that the, the, the summary effect size estimate is uh, 0.1499. We can also visualize this using a forest plot here. Let's take a zoom. We'll zoom in a bit, and we can see this summary estimate and the studies that went into the summary effect size estimate. Uh, we can also calculate a, uh, or we can also uh, create a forest plot as well, which uh, visualizes the standard error against the effect size. Now, there are three ways when it comes to calculating power, you need to uh, specify what the true population effect size is. And this is difficult in practice, but there are three ways that you can do this. Firstly, you can use the summary estimate that you got from your meta-analysis here, which was 0.144, but uh, because of publication bias, often these effects are inflated from the true effect size. So the other thing you can do is to calculate a, a bias-corrected uh, effect size, and you can do that using the p-uniform package, which um, does this bias-adjusted estimate. So we're going to run this here, and we can see that the bias-adjusted estimate is a little bit lower at 0.1082. The final way that you could uh, calculate the true population effect size for your power analysis is to specify a smallest effect size of interest. And uh, in this case, uh, what we're going to do for our smallest effect size of interest is say that it's 0 0.05, that this is the smallest effect that we care about, that anything less than this is practically meaningless. So we're going to uh, run the, um, the the sunset function. By default, it takes the summary estimate from the meta-analysis. So we're going to run this and see the plot that it generates. So we're looking at the colors. You can see how um, the, the different ranges of power for these tests. Some of these tests were hovering above 85% power, whereas a lot were quite low. So there's a bit of a spread here. Uh, and uh, the median power was 33.6%, which isn't great, but better than a lot of other studies, a lot of, a lot of other meta-analyses. Uh, what we can also do is we can run the same power analysis, but by using the smallest effect size of interest, and we specify it by, um, by explicitly writing in what we believe the true effect is. And in this case, we're going to say it's 0 0.05. So we'll run this. And with our true effect, or if we believe our true effect is much lower, um, the, the power is going to be, uh, the power is also going to be much lower. So we'll take a look and we can see that a lot of these studies, uh, if we believe the true effect to be 0.05, to be in the danger zone of red, any studies within this red sort of zone uh, have low power. And here we can see that most are under 20% if we believe the true effect is 0.05. Now, if you want the explicit figures for power, what you can do is I've put together this function. We can run this function here. And then if we believe, we'll go back to our original true effect of 0.15. We can run the function. And then looking back here, what this does is this adds a column at the end, which specifies the power.